Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Before I bring on our very esteemed famous guest, I want to remind everybody out in ATP land, if you haven't done so already, please take out your cell phone, text the word truth in the message box to the number 88202, push send. You'll be signed up for all of our content absolutely for free. You'll get it in the palm of your hand on your cell phone at absolutely no cost. Thanks for doing that. So let me tell you who's on today. It's Dr. Walid Faraz, an old friend of ATP. He's an expert in foreign policy and national security. He was the foreign policy advisor at Mitt Romney's presidential campaign. He was a foreign policy advisor to Donald Trump. He still advises members of Congress and the European Parliament on the Middle East. He's written a lot of books and the newest one, The Lost Spring, The Coming Revolution and The Choice. He's on Fox News all the time. He's a professor, a total expert in Middle East policy. My friend, Waleed Ferris. Welcome back, doctor. Thank you, Barry, very, very much for this invitation. And I know we should have done it earlier. We've been uh, together discussing geopolitics for the last maybe two decades. So I'm glad to be back with you. It's an honor to have you on. We'll do it regularly. So let's jump right in. There's so much going on in your area of expertise. As we know, Trump canceled the JCPOA based in part mm -hmm. on the evidence that the Mossad, the Israeli intelligence service smuggled out of Tehran that proved massive cheating on the deal. Plus in violation of UN Accords, missile development that could deliver via ICBM bombs all over the world. How bad was Iran cheating at the time and why didn't the IAEA catch it? Barry, uh, Iran was only cheating. There was no, they were not doing anything else, uh, basically. Number one, as you just mentioned, uh, the uh, text, they were cheating on the text. So they were developing, still developing a number of technologies to uh, apply a program to obtain the nuclear bomb at the end of the day. But they were cheating also in a different manner. They were purchasing and developing and developing long range ballistic missiles. And you and I know you don't throw uh, roses with missiles like these, you throw uh, non-conventional weapons. They were deploying them, they actually sent them to Yemen, as you know. Uh, they were also funding and training their militias in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Yemen. So they were all over the place cheating on not just the text, but also on the context. Uh, of that deal. And that's why President Trump at the time made the good decision to withdraw from that deal. So now Iran has announced and it's been verified that they're enriching uranium, doctor, past 60% and only two to 3% is necessary for civilian use. So it's obvious they're making a bomb isn't it obvious to the rest of the world that they're very, very close to nuclear weapons at this point? It should be, Barry. Uh, they are at a level that can produce now uh, nuclear bombs, tactical nuclear bombs, or much larger ones. But they have a dual use for what they're doing. On the one hand, they're telling themselves, OK, if nobody stops us, we're going to get to the bomb. And then we'll sign a new deal not to use that bomb. Uh, but also, they could use it as a leverage, as pressure against the Biden administration. And here's the, the problem there. The Biden administration and Biden team are an extension of the Obama administration, the one that actually created the deal. Behind that deal, there are a lot of financial economic interests. I mean, the companies that are going to invade Iran with, with, with engagements and contracts, first in Europe and now, of course, in the United States, they're putting tremendous pressure on the administration. Get us the deal, whatever the price is. So Iran knows that. So it is messaging the Biden administration, either you'll do what we say, remove those sanctions, come back to the deal, let us get the cash, or we're gonna to continue to enrich. In either way, their calculations is that they are winning. They did not win under the Trump presidency, but they believe they are winning now. Dr. Walid, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And there's, there's a big name agreeing with you, which is the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has said publicly that, quote, Iran could be mere weeks away from amassing mm -hmm. enough fissionable material for a nuclear weapon. So the Biden administration knows it. They've gone public with it. 
Iran has announced what they're doing. Who in the world thinks that with a deal or without a deal, they're suddenly going to give up the program? They could literally be very close to making 10 or more nuclear weapons right now. Barry, I'm so glad you asked the question. I've been asked this question by the international media and now through you to the American public. This is what the uh, Biden administration is trying to do. It's a psychological you know, trick. So Secretary Blinken, say, Blinken, Blinken says, uh, if we don't do anything, Iran will get the bomb. That's what he's telling us. So you would think that we need to take measures against Iran to stop it. No, his conclusion is the only thing we can do is go and sign the agreement and therefore lift those sanctions. It's a very twisted way of dealing with Iran. Actually, it is, as I argued earlier, a result of this tremendous pressure by financial centers and those going to go into the Iran uh, market on the Biden administration. So either the choice given to us by the Biden administration, either Iran will have a bomb or will have to fund Iran. It's, it's like uh, Iran is, is uh, like a pirate. This is so much like the prime minister of Great Britain meeting with Hitler on the, the seizure of uh, part of Czechoslovakia before the mm -hmm. war. You know, the guy's out of control, so let's give him more stuff. And he promises this time to be better. Yeah. Yeah. So not only is it Anthony Blinken, who's the secretary of state, it's even worse when you go right below him and you find Wendy Sherman. Mm -hmm. Under Secretary of State, second person in control of the State Department, the negotiator on the disastrous North Korean deal for Bill Clinton, the negotiator for the disastrous JCPOA for Barack Obama, instead of getting kicked out of government, she got promoted, and now she's the one supervising the new negotiations right now in Europe. Is there any reason to believe the New Deal won't be a disaster like her last two nuclear deals that blew up in her face? Well, first point, let's be very clear. These are not individuals on their own. These are diplomats appointed by the White House. And the White House, this administration, have already decided during their campaign, it's not a secret, which in fact is an extension of the Obama uh, policy, that they're going to go straight to the Iran deal. And these are public servants who are doing exactly what their administration is trying to do. So the blame is on the administration, not just on uh, individuals. I do project, Barry, that they're going to go back to the deal. They, they, they can't flee it because there are a lot of pressures and there are intertwined interests. That was the case under the Obama administration. That's the case now. The problem is they're going to sign the deal. It's going to provoke a lot of confrontations in the Middle East. And at the end of the day, we may be witnessing another or multiple regional wars, because not everybody in the region is happy that Iran will get nukes, will get ICBMs, has militias, and will get cash. Neither the Arab coalition, nor Israel, or even the Iranian opposition. So this is not very smart what we're trying to do right now. Instead of having negotiations, bring in all the countries in the Middle East and see how to address this, uh, this threat, we're giving everything up to the Iran regime. Everything you said points me at this conclusionary question. Why in the world is the US going back into this deal with Iran? They were chanting, I checked, death to America yesterday. They're still painting death slogans on their missiles, all about America and all about Israel. They are absolutely convinced that someday Washington, D.C. is going to fly the flag of the caliphate. What in the world are we thinking, I mean, we, the United States, to go kiss their tush to get mm. them to sign a deal that they're not going to honor anyway? You know, Barry, the teams that are engaged in this negotiation tasked by the administration, who, as I said, and I continue to uh, underline this, are an extension of the Obama administration, are influenced by an academic elite here on our campuses, which is arguing that it is our mistake, it's our foreign policy error, we should redress all these injustices, you know, the woke culture and so on and so forth. So they are arguing that what the Iranian regime and their supporters are doing is just a reaction to what our foreign policy has been. You can see it argued everywhere. So their estimate is 
if we give them money, if, the, if we work with them, if we facilitate what they want to achieve, they will become more moderate with time. Meaning if we pay the price of the injustice that we have served in the region, while it's just the opposite, the Iran regime has been oppressing, first of all, the Iranians. You know that, Barry. we discussed it many times, how many uprisings took place against the Iran regime and zero, nothing was said on behalf of the Obama administration, nothing has been said on behalf of the Biden administration. They crushed the Iraqi youth demonstrating in the streets of Baghdad against the Iranian militias. Uh, what happened with, with the Assad regime as well. And of course, in Lebanon, there were a couple and uh, revolutions against Hezbollah and we abandoned the people of the Middle East. So yes, if there is any ethical problem, moral problem, it's really uh, you know our side, meaning this administration and the, the one that created the deal who should look into what they have done themselves to the peoples of the Middle East. Extremely well said in your insight. I wish you were an advisor in this White House because my goodness, do they need to hear the sane words of Dr. Walid Faraz. Uh, tell people where they can get in touch with you and follow what you're doing, would you please? Well, thank you very much. It's uh, on Twitter, at Walid Faris. You have to spell it W-A-L-I-D, Faris, P-H-A-R-E-S. Same for my Facebook uh, page. And obviously you could email me at Faris at WalidFaris.com. You can get all the books I have. And also I will answer if you send a question. Fantastic. And I advise all of our viewers out around the world, this is the guy that understands. He's from the region. He's a political scientist. He's an expert. The rest of the world listens. So should you. And for all of you who haven't, do me a favor. Sign up for our text alert system. You know how to do it. It's simple. It'll just take you a couple of seconds. For ATP Report, thanks for coming on today and joining me with Dr. Walid Farah's I'm Barry Newsbaum.